Okay, I'm going to talk um, not for too long today about uh, mass transfer. Um, it's probably the only subject that I suppose is unique to chemical engineering and uh, by default biotech. You, you don't really, well, mechanical engineers might touch on that, but it's not a subject really that, that comes into uh, the, the other engineering disciplines or any of the sciences. I mean, mass transfer is occurs in so many different processes within chemical engineering from you know liquid liquid extraction um, leaching processes distillation uh, adsorption processes like chromatography it's it's a really um i suppose it, it's a key discipline within within chemical engineering and it's actually one of my favorite subjects um there was and uh, I did a master's actually many years ago on, on diffusion and uh, I've always had a kind of a, a thing for, for mass transfer. So up on the screen there, I, um, I'm i just drawing some of the parallels between heat transfer and mass transfer. And heat transfer we saw is conceptually quite simple. You know, there's, there's nothing really conceptually difficult. I mean, temperature differences create heat fluxes and that's kind of it. Um, and then when we introduced the uh, resistance to heat transfer concept, we had a very powerful way of looking at even quite complicated heat transfer systems and being able to write down an expression for the flux in terms of the overall temperature difference and uh, the sum of the various resistances to heat transfer. Um, and it was all quite logical and, and straightforward. Um, and to some extent, mass transfer is quite similar. And if we look on the left here, we have heat conduction. Well, where we have heat conduction, um, we also have um, mass diffusion. And um, so we have this, uh, oh, where we have a heat flux, now we have a mass flux, generally denoted by the letter J when you're talking about diffusion. Um, and the, the mass flux in, in mass transfer is proportional to a concentration gradient and the, the constant in the equation then is a thing called a diffusion coefficient or a, a diffusivity. So very similar um, mathematical shape on diffusion as there is on heat conduction. Now in terms of processing, you don't really get too many instances where you have to worry about diffusion and, and describe things mathematically using the diffusion coefficient. I suppose the, the couple of areas would be chromatography where a, a solute might have to diffuse through a bead and then bind into the interior of the bead or whatever. Some types of bioreactors called heterogeneous bioreactors, you also look at diffusion. Um, medical devices like slow release systems, those kind of things, diffusion is also a, a thing. But just like in heat transfer, where most heat transfer processes are, are convective, it's the same in, in mass transfer. And in, in heat transfer, we said that the convective heat transfer flux is, is related to a thing called the heat transfer coefficient times the temperature difference. And the same thing applies <coughs> in, in mass transfer. And in mass transfer, we define a thing called the, the mass transfer coefficient. Unfortunately, it's given the same letter as the thermal conductivity, but these are totally different Ks here. This is not the same as that. This is, this is a mass transfer coefficient <clears throat> and this is some concentration difference. And I suppose the, the big issue with mass transfer is that the concentration difference is very often not as obvious as the temperature difference in heat transfer. There's a little bit of subtlety involved in defining what the concentration difference is. Um, the other difficulty with mass transfer, obviously, is that concentrations can be expressed in all kinds of units. You, know, you can have motor units. Uh, mass units, molar, mole fractions, mass fractions, partial pressure, pressures, and what have you. Um, and that just complicates it. And actually, if, if you study mass transfer in depth, it is a bit of a kind of a, a bog of, of, of detail. Um, and it's very easy to, to muck up calculations. Um, the thing about biotech, though, is we deal with a small number of systems, and the most common one would be the air-water system. And it turns out that the air-water system um, is actually quite simple in many ways, and there are reasons for that. I'll talk about it in the next lecture. So, but we're not going to get too bogged down in, in units. I'm going to define 
my units pretty simply so that the mass transfer always comes out with the same units of as as the flux in other words meters per second but you know i don't want to get bogged down in units in, in this course we're really talking about basic principles <clears throat> we talked again in, in heat transfer about um the fact that when you have multiple resistance so you have to use a thing called an overall heat transfer coefficient and um, and the same applies in mass transfer and we tend to use capital k although the thing about mass transfer is there are actually two overall heat tra overall mass transfer coefficients in any application it's, it depends on precisely how you you what concentration difference you're looking at um whereas in in heat transfer there's, there's only one single uh, heat transfer coefficient okay so what i'm going to do is i'm not going to just plow through the notes so i'll go through two examples in the notes um and i don't expect you to be learning off all the, the derivations and what have you but the, there are two two examples and they both um raise this issue of of defining a concentration difference in a, a mass transfer process so i'll, I'll just go into paint and I'll talk about the essence of the problem and then let you read the, the notes through yourselves. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is, if you look at the first example in, in the notes, it's about the humidic humidification of, of air in a container. So basically what we have is we have what's called in mass transfer an interface. And on this side of the interface, we have uh, water. And on this side of it, we have air. And it's a humidification process. So what we're seeing is, is mass transfer um, in this direction. So our mass transfer is going in this direction. Now, just for comparison, if you think back to um, heat transfer where we had a hot surface and we have a cold fluid and we had a temperature profile something like this so we typically had a hot fluid and then the temperature drops so you have a hot temperature here and a cold temperature here and then you could write that q is h into t hot minus t cold so there was no mystery um, really about and there was a nice consistent continuous temperature profile now the thing about mass transfer is that you don't get this nice continuous profile you actually get something slightly strange so let's imagine here this is the concentration of water so we have very high concentration of water. It's essentially the density of, of the water. <clears throat> so a thousand kilogram per meter cubed. So this is at some concentration and it doesn't matter what it is at the moment. But if you think about this, the water concentration, it's pure water is a thousand milligrams per, per meters cubed. Then there has to be some sort of discontinuity here. Like you can't just have water, the air as it approaches the, this interface, having concentrations approaching this concentration here. Because, you know, you couldn't have air with a thousand kilogram per meter cubed of water in it. Then it wouldn't be air, it would just be water. So what happens is there's a, a discontinuity. So if we're looking at the, the air side and we're looking at the, the concentration of water vapor in the air, then it's at some value here that's much lower than the actual concentration of, of pure water. So you get a drop in here, and we'll just call this CW. That's the, that's the concentration of concentration of the water vapor in the air. So Obviously, you know, even on a very humid day, I mean, air is still mostly air, but if it's very humid, there is a lot of moisture in it, but, you know, it's it's not like it's pure water. So, the question then is, what is this concentration? 
And obviously there's no real way of proving this, but what we normally assume is that at the interface here, that the concentration of water vapor in, in air, of the water vapor here, is equal to CW star, where CW star is essentially the maximum concentration of possible of water vapor in air, and we call that the, the saturation concentration. And what that means is, and if you look at, if you think of the whole issue of solubility, you know, whenever you're dissolving one substance into another, the, the issue of, of solubility limit comes into play. So a particular solute um, or a particular solvent can only hold so much of a solvent um, in solution. And we call that the saturation concentration of the solute in, in the solvent. Um, if you try to increase your concentration of the solute in the solvent above that, you, it just precipitates out. So, for example, there's only so much sugar you can put in your tea and, and expect it to dissolve. If you keep adding sugar, eventually it won't dissolve anymore because you're at the, the saturation concentration. So what we normally assume then in, in mass transfer in, in this kind of situation where, um, and the, the key thing here, and I'm, I'm not going to labor it so much this year, is that this is a pure substance. So you've got a pure substance. Um, and it's it's mass transferring into another substance. But when you have a pure substance in contact with another substance and mass transfer is going in that direction, then what we normally assume is that the concentration in this set, this phase at that interface is equal to the saturation value. And the saturation value is something you can look up and it tends to be a function of temperature. We know, for example, that if very warm air has um, has a higher uh, ability to, to hold water than, than cold air. So CW star increases with temperature. So our expression for the mass flux then is N is equal to K into CW star minus CW. So one way of thinking of this is in terms of why mass transfer occurs. Well, mass transfer occurs because the actual concentration of water vapor in the air at any given time is less than the saturation value. So you can think of mass transfer in this instance as these two phases being in, in contact and mass transfer is trying to bring them to a state of equilibrium. And a complete state of equilibrium would be if this concentration eventually ended up as CW star. Um, so, and I go through the analysis in, in the notes. If you plot CW versus uh, time, you get something like this. So you get a nice exponential response. Um, it's a very similar analysis to heating of a tanker or whatever, all these things are pretty much the same. Um, so, so that's the issue um, in mass transfer. It's, it's this the idea of an interface um, and the fact that you you have to be careful about defining what your actual concentrations are. Um, the same issue arises um, when you look at the, the dissolving particle that you do in the lab. So, so suppose this is your sugar particle, so this is your sweet that you're in BE271, and this is your, your beaker of water. So this is this is essentially solid sugar here, and you've got water here, and you've got your stirrer on, and so your your sweet is a hundred is a massive concentration of glucose or, or sucrose. Then there's a discontinuity here, and here we've got, let's call it the saturate C of the sweet, so C S for sweet and its saturation value. So that's, the, I feel like, the water in contact with the surface of the sweet is at the solubility limit. So it's holding as much sugar as is possible. And then that declines the CS there. So again, the flux is equal to the mass transfer coefficient times the saturation concentration, which is a function of temperature. Uh, 
times C. So if you do that experiment at different temperatures, what will happen is your saturation concentration of sugar in water gets bigger. So if you increase the temperature, you increase to see the sugar concentration. <clears throat> and therefore your, your particle dissolves more quickly. And one of the assumptions you, you probably make in that experiment that this value here in, in the beaker is probably much less than this. So you can probably even neglect this. Um, but but in, a, in essence, this idea of, and again, one of the things here, this is a pure substance. Um, so whenever you have a pure substance, this is what the concentration profiles look like. But And you've got your concentration at the interface is the saturation value. So it just makes things a little bit more tricky, I suppose, in terms of formulating mass transfer. You have to be aware of this idea of, of saturation concentration. So it, it's one of the reasons that if you look at mass transfer as, as a subject, it is it is a, a transport process just like heat transfer or fluid flow, but it is very much linked with physical chemistry. You know, the, the two are quite, this idea of, of saturation and equilibrium and stuff, um, it is very much in the realm of physical chemistry. <clears throat> um, so it's not a standalone subject in the sense that if you want to understand mass transfer, you have to understand a little bit about, about physical chemistry. Um, when we go on to look at the oxygen transfer system, and that's the most common system in biotech for mass transfer, where you have, and I'll talk about this in the next lecture, but you have an air bubble and you have, say, your your medium here, that's your the contents of, of your bioreactor, then what you have in a bioreactor, you've got cells in here growing and they need oxygen. So you have transfer of O2 from the air bubble into the medium. And if you think about this, this is not quite the same as, as what we had before. So we have essentially nitrogen plus oxygen here, and we have water here, and we've transfer of, of O2 this way. Nitrogen hardly dissolves in oxygen at all, so we can ignore the transfer of that. So it's a little bit different because this is not pure. But one of the things, and I'll talk about the next day, I won't labor the point, you can derive it exactly from a, a kind of a more general theory of mass transfer. Um, one of the things uh, that's nice about the oxygen water system, particularly given its importance in uh, in biotech, is that you can actually treat this system as if the nitrogen wasn't there at all and this was just pure oxygen. So you can write for, in, in the notation of, of mass transfer, you can write it as K. We generally put an L on it uh, for the oxygen water system into C L star. That's the typical notation used in the oxygen water system. So this is your your mass transfer coefficient, and that's the, the saturation concentration of dissolved oxygen, dissolved oxygen DO in water. And then the, the Cl is your actual concentration. of DO in water. And we find that usually this KL comes together with another uh, little bit, it comes together with a, a surface area term and it comes, so we have this thing called the KLA or the volumetric mass transfer coefficient, which is an absolutely key parameter in, in, in biotech. Um, the whole area of what we call scale up, and I mentioned this in, in the notes, on the KLAs, where you're going from, you know, you might have a small reactor and you find it does something, it produces your product nicely, and then you go to a much bigger reactor for industrial scale processing. When you go from this small scale to large scale, the biology remains the same, <clears throat> but if you want to reproduce the same performance that you get at, at this scale, at, then again at this scale, <clears throat> 
then it turns out that one of the most important things to get right is is your your mass transfer it's nothing to do with biology and there's a very common way of of kind of a rule of thumb for scalo is often that you ensure that the kla value in in the bigger reactor is the same as the value in the smaller reactor but we'll t i'll talk about that in, in the next lecture very briefly and we'll talk about it uh, next year as well so i'm going to leave that there today i'll do the, the kla one tomorrow um, but I would urge you to look at the two Khan Academy um, videos on the, on Loop. They're they're actually quite entertaining. I, I enjoyed them when I watched them the first time. And there's other Khan Academy stuff on diffusion in the lungs and that kind of thing, which is quite interesting. But the the two I, I have up on Loop are, are definitely worth a watch, just to give you a feel for what diffusion is and the fact that diffusion is a molecular process, just like conduction. Whereas, you know, when you have convective mass transfer, there, there's bulk um, motion of fluid. Okay, I'll leave that. Keep it short and sweet today.